Hi everybody, my name is Connor McDonald. This is how you get in touch with me via Twitter, and this is my blog. I'm one of the developer advocates inside Oracle, trying to make your life more productive and successful as a developer. This is the next of the KISS series of videos, keeping it simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. These are short two minute sessions with a strong developer focus because partitioning is often seen as the realm of the DBAs. In this session, we'll be doing more on interval partitioning. A quick recap from the last video. Remember the interval partitioning solves the following problem. It's New Year's Eve, it's the last day of the year, and we've forgotten to add a partition for next year's transaction. At the stroke of midnight, when we try to our first insert, we don't have a partition to put some data into, and we get ORA 14400. Interval partitioning was our way of doing that to automatically create partitions as required. What about all existing range tables though? After all, interval partitioning came in in version 11. We've had range partition tables since version 8 of Oracle. Do we have to unload and reload them? No, we don't. We can actually convert a range table to interval with a very simple syntax. We simply do alter table, my range table, and give it an interval size, set interval in this case, one month. Once we've done that, let's assume my range table doesn't have a partition for January 2017. An insert simply works. When we go look at the data dictionary, just like we saw in the previous video, you can see we have the existing range partitions there, but a new interval partition with an automatically generated name was created for us. What we've now got effectively is a table that's sort of half a range table, the existing partitions are range partitions, and all the new partitions are interval partitions. It's partly range, partly interval. If we add a new column to our data dictionary query, you can see the interval column we're querying we actually get told by the dictionary which columns are defined as range and which are defined as intervals. You can see the last two there were interval partitions. You need to be careful when converting a range table to an interval partition table. Recall when we looked at interval partitions, what we do is we have a starting point, a nominated line where our very first partition is defined, then the size of the interval effectively maps out all the interval partitions that exist or could exist in future but we need that starting point in order to actually map out all the potential interval partitions. So if I've got lots of existing range partitions, it's obviously critical that I know where that very last partition is because that's going to define where all the future for interval partitions are going to be built from. That highest range value is effectively a marker for all subsequent interval partitions. Let's have a look at our table again. We can see we've got partitions P1 up to P13, they're conventional range partitions, and we've got a couple of interval partitions. P13 is the highest value range marker, so it's critical, we need that in order to know where the interval partitions will start from. So when we're doing things like maintenance, I can drop, for example, partition P1, no problems there. I can drop partition P02, no problems there. When I try drop partition P13, because it is the highest range marker, I can't because if I was to do that, I no longer know where my interval partitions would start. Now, how do we work around that? What if I have a regular archive system and P13 is now very, very old? It's very simple. We simply rearrange the interval partitions. What do I mean by that? We run the following command. We reapply the interval command to the range table. What that will do is take every existing partition that's there, including the interval ones, and make them now conventional range partitions. In effect, we've moved the high watermark along to the very last interval partition. Or you only have to be on the latest release 12.2 and we take care of that conversion for you automatically. You can run these scripts yourself by clicking on the live SQL link in the YouTube description. In the next session, we'll look at more of the idiosyncrasies on interval and range partitions. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you all again soon on the KISS principle, keeping it simple with SQL.